Hello. Are you ready to join in and read along with me? Yes? Then let's begin. When you hear this sound, turn the page. Puss in Boots There was once an old miller who had three sons. To the eldest, he gave his windmill. And to the next, his donkey. The youngest, Tom, was left with nothing but the cat. Do not worry, said Puss. Give me a pair of boots, a hat and a bag. I will help you to make your fortune. Tom was very surprised, but he did as Puss asked. As soon as Puss had pulled on his boots, he took his bag into the field and caught a young rabbit. Proudly, Puss hurried to the royal palace, where he asked to speak to the king. Upon seeing the king, Puss bowed low and handed the rabbit to him. Here is a present from my master, the noble Marquis of Carabas, said Puss. The king thought that the Marquis of Carabas must be very important to have such a fine servant. He could not have guessed that the Marquis of Carabas was the name Puss had chosen for Tom, who was the miller's son. Please tell your master that I thank him said the king. Every day, Puss took his bag and caught something to give to the king as a present from the Marquis of Carabas. Whenever the king asked about his master, clever Puss would reply that the Marquis of Carabas was the richest and most handsome lord in all the land and that his castle was the finest that had ever been built. The king longed to meet the Marquis of Carabas to see whether all that Puss had told him was true. Now one morning, Puss knew that the king would be driving by the river with his daughter, the most beautiful princess in the world. Just as he heard the coach draw near, Puss told Tom to take off his ragged clothes and jump into the river. Help! cried Puss. My master has been robbed of all his clothes. I fear he will drown. When the king heard that the Marquis of Carabas was in trouble, he sent a servant back to his palace for a fine suit of royal clothes. When Tom had dressed, the king invited him to ride in the royal coach. Tom looked so handsome in his new clothes that the king believed all Puss had told him. The beautiful princess fell in love with Tom. Meanwhile, Puss ran ahead of the coach until he met some farmers working in the fields. Good farmer, said Puss, when the king passes, if you do not tell him that these fields belong to the Marquis of Carabas, you will be chopped into little pieces. Puss travelled on, saying the same thing to everyone he met. When the king passed by, he heard, of course, that everything as far as the eye could see belonged to the Marquis of Carabas. At last, Puss came to the castle of a rich and powerful ogre. I have heard, Puss told the ogre, that you can change yourself into any creature, no matter how big. 
suddenly, in the ogre's place, there stood a roaring lion. <laughs> Frightened, Puss hid until the ogre was himself again. Now all this time, Puss had a plan to trick the ogre. It must be much harder, suggested Puss, to turn yourself into something as small as a mouse. You shall see, replied the ogre, and in his place there scampered a tiny mouse. At once, Puss pounced on the mouse and gobbled it up. When the king arrived at the castle gate, Puss ran to open it. Welcome to the castle of the Marquis of Carabas, your majesty, said Puss. The king and the beautiful princess were amazed to see such a fine castle. But nobody was quite as surprised as the Marquis of Carabas. Puss led them to where a splendid banquet was waiting. This had been cooked for the ogre, but now everything in the castle and all the land for miles belonged to the Marquis of Carabas. The king decided that the Marquis of Carabas should marry the beautiful princess, if she wished it too. The beautiful princess said that she did. So the king arranged a grand wedding for the very next day. Tom and the beautiful princess were married and they lived together happily ever after. Puss became a great lord. He had a different pair of boots for every day of the week, dined on the finest cream and never chased a mouse again. I hope you enjoyed the story. 